Lesson 6.2c, Problem Solving with Unit Rates. We can solve rate problems by using a unit rate or by using equivalent rates. We can write equivalent rates by multiplying or dividing both terms of the rate by the same number. So here's a rate that we read one book in six hours. We can make an equivalent rate by multiplying both terms of the rate by the same number. This means if we can read one book in six hours, we can read three books in 18 hours. When a rate is in fraction form, we make an equivalent fraction. If we drive 120 miles in two hours, that means we could drive 240 miles in four hours. If we can eat four pizzas in two hours, and we divide both terms by the same number, that means we should be able to eat two pizzas in one hour. This is a unit rate because there's one unit, one hour. And unit rate is also an equivalent rate. We're dividing both terms by the same number. We get an equivalent rate. And in this case, it's a unit rate. Emma read a 261-page book in nine days. If she read the same amount of pages each day, how many pages per day did she read? So remember, per means each. So that's pages in one day, pages each day. The word before per, this word pages, is going to be our numerator, and the word after per is going to be our denominator. That's the nine. So we have 261 over nine. To find a unit rate each day, we need a denominator of 1 that tells us we need to do 9 divided by 9 to get the 1. That means we need to do 261 divided by 9 because they're divided by the same number. We need to figure out how many times 9 can fit into 261. Well, 9 times 3 is 27, so that's too much. We're going to have to go with a 2. And 9 times 2 is 18. So we're going to subtract that. That's going to become a 1. Now we have 16 to minus 8, which is an 8. It's this 1's turn to come down. 9 can fit into 81. Do you know? 9 times 9 is 81, so that's going to be a 9. That means our unit rate is 29 in one day. We know Emma read 29 pages per day. It says she read the same amount of pages each day. We know it was 29. So be careful when you're writing your rate. Remember this little rule that the word before per is the numerator and the word after per is the denominator. And it may not be written pages per day or dollars per hour, but if you look at the word problem, you'll figure out that that's what is happening, okay? I'll show you some, in some other examples. Tala earned $50 from walking four dogs. How much will she earn if she walks seven dogs? Well, if this said eight, we could just double it. We could double the four to be an eight and double the 50 to be 100, but we can't double it. This is going from a four to a seven. So we think if we can find the unit rate, the price per dog, we can multiply that by 7 for an equivalent rate. So here we turned these words into price per dog. $50 for four dogs, that's our rate. We know we want our denominator to be a 1, so we're going to do 4 divided by 4. This one needs to be divided by the same amount, so we have $50 divided by 4. We can do some division on the side. 4 fits into $50. We do our math and we get $12.50. So we know that's one dog. Our unit rate is $12.50 to walk one dog. Now we can multiply the unit rate times seven to find out how much she'll earn for seven dogs. We can do a little multiplication down here on the side, and we see that it's $87.50 for seven dogs. This is the equivalent rate. We know Tala will earn $87.50. So 
we had to take the information of price per dog, multiply it by seven to find the answer. And we found the price per dog by doing division here. And we divided by the same number, didn't we? This one says, in a youth soccer league, each team will have 18 players and three coaches. This year, 192 players signed up. How many coaches are needed? When we think, we can find how many players per coach as a unit rate, then use equivalent rates. 18 players, three coaches. We can find the unit rate of how many players per coach. We divide both by three, so we can have a denominator of one for our unit rate, and we see it's six players for one coach. If there's 192 players, we're going to divide 192 divided by six. How many sixes fit into 192? Remember, we can find a missing factor using division as an inverse operation. There they undo each other, don't they? So if we need to find 6 times something is equal to 192, we can do 192 divided by 6. And we see it's a 32. This means we're going to multiply the 6 times 32. We're going to multiply the coaches times 32. And we see we're going to need 32 coaches. How many coaches are needed? 32. This one's about apples. The cost of 10 apples is $3.50. What is the cost of four dozen apples? We think we can find the cost per apple, and remember that one dozen is 12. That means four dozen is four times 12, so we're looking for 48 apples as our denominator. We do cost per apple of $3.50 for 10. We have 10 for a denominator, so we're going to divide by 10, which means we've got to divide this one by 10. We can do a little division on the side. 10 fits into $3.50. It comes out as $0.35 cents for one apple. Now we can multiply them, both terms, by 48 to find the cost of 48 apples. We can do 35 cents times 48 apples. We get $16.80. So remember, there's going to be two jumps in this product because we have one, two decimal jumps in the problem, okay, in the equation that tells us how many are going to be in the product. We know it's $16.80 for 48 apples. Find the unit price first, then multiply it by the number that we need to multiply by to get that amount, okay? We're moving on to the next lesson, 6.3, which is broken up into three smaller lessons. And we're gonna be learning about using ratios and rates to solve problems. Have a really nice day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.